Here we go. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Vern Glenn. Sup! <laughs> Bruce McGowan. <laughs> I, like, I always love when he starts off that I way. I love it. Okay, uh, let's see. Well, let's get right into, you know, in a couple of weeks, we're going to be getting into the college football bowl game. Mm -hmm. Now, when I, when I was young, I, if I remember correctly, the Fiesta Bowl was new. Yes, it was. Right? They only had, like, the Rose Bowl, the Orange Bowl, the Sugar Bowl. The Cotton Bowl was big. The Cotton Bowl but was always big. But now that's kind of uh, taken sort of a back seat. The Rose Bowl was always the granddaddy. That, that was the granddaddy. I remember, yeah. do you remember Jim Plunkett, 1970? Oh, yeah. Yes. Before he went to the Boston Patriots? That's right. He beat the Ohio State Buckeyes. That's right. Yeah, yeah. that's right. So the, I was looking at the venues here. Excuse me. The, the How much the team. It says here, most recent per team payout, $17 million. The Rose Bowl. Dang. Yeah. So now, and some of these teams, they get to keep it all, but some of these teams, they got to share with the rest of the league, right? I, you know, I'm not sure I how, think, that I don't know how that works. Yeah, I think, I think that doesn't it, surprise me, though. I think, I think with the Pac 12, you got uh, you got to share that check yeah. with, with the other member schools. Of course, the Pac 12 is doing very well because of that new Pac 12 television network, which, of course, a lot of people were not really thrilled with that. I know I have uh, in laws, my, my mother and father in law, who were longtime Stanford season ticket holders, and they hated not being able to go to Saturday afternoon games because all the games were 4 o'clock, 7 o'clock. You have a game at 7 o'clock, you got to drive. Well, let's say that's uh, money. It's close to oh, prime time. It's, hey, you got to adjust. I understand it. You, but know? I mean, you know, if you're a long time, if you're a traditionalist, college football is meant to be played on a Saturday afternoon. That's just it. And that's the problem. Television rules everything now. Yeah, they drive the bus. Yeah. I mean, it's all, I mean, it's, it's been billions that way for of dollars. Long, it's been that way for a long time. I, you know, again, as a, as a purist, somebody who grew up with it, uh, I don't like it, but and, you know, and, I'm, I'm I'm old school. And having said that, now that you brought up the bowls, how much will all these bowls really mean next year when the playoff system comes into light? How, how are they going to work that? Do playoffs before the bowls to figure out who gets in? They're the going to use the main bowls as oh, as, a as a in the playoff uh, system. Because they still have, I mean, the BCS. So, 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 whoever, whoever has the national championship game, that that essentially will be the college football Super Bowl. Why, why is it we have to have a national champion that is, you know, I mean, in the old days it was the mythical national champion, and even now today it's an imperfect system where the team that wins it isn't really always the best team. But yes, they are. They won the national championship like, because well, it's yeah. all because because everybody else does it, and 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 you have a decisive winner from this. Yeah. Tournament. It's America. Where, where, where you've got, I believe you get to what? Was it to the top yeah. sixteen teams make it, or top yeah. twelve? Some, somehow, that somehow they, they 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 get this committee. Condoleezza Rice is a member sure. of this committee, yeah. where they decide who's going to go, and they just whittle it down using the bowl systems. But you know, these little Poland weed eater bowls, you know, <laughs> we're, at bottom, we're at the bottom of the food chain. Yeah. I mean, I can uh, I, I wonder how much they pay. Is with. anybody going to care? Yeah, you know, like, well, like the, the Capital, one, the the capital one Bowl. Like, how yeah. much does Capital One pay to, to put their name surprised. on that? I mean, I like the one here in the Bay Area. We have the uh, the Kraft by Hunger Bowl, which has Washington against BYU. Now, it's not a huge game by any means, no, but it's didn't, a didn't Kraft, high school. Didn't yeah. Kraft bail? Isn't it just the, the Fight Hunger Bowl? Fight Hunger Bowl, okay. Yeah. yeah. I guess so. Maybe not. Well, okay, Maybe so not I, years ago, like before the BCS championship game, because uh, I think that's the whole reason why they brought it in is because they were going, okay, well, what would, let's say, the Rose Bowl, that was be, supposed to be the granddaddy. Is that open to potentially all teams? I mean, you don't have to be in the, the Pac-12 or the Pac-8, right? It was it was theoretically the two best teams. Texas got in there one year and, and aced out Cal, which I thought was just, oh, that was, that, that was yeah, terrible. In 2006, yeah. when uh, Aaron Rodgers was there, and Cal was ranked ahead of Texas most of the season, but Mac Brown did such a great job of campaigning. And I remember talking to Nam Diasen while we were playing with the Raiders who had been at Cal. He goes, we were robbed. We were robbed. Yeah. And it's true, they were. I mean, Texas put on a good show with Vince Young, but still. But wasn't was, was that the national championship game? No, it was not the national championship game. No. How did Texas go then? It, you know, I can't remember the exact circumstances. All I know is that Mac Brown was a very, very influential guy, and he had a lot more pull than Jeff Tedford. Well, it reminds me, uh, last week we had uh, Brian Tuohy on about the fixings in, and <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Maybe there's a payoff for I that know. one. I'm telling I mean, you. You're talking big bucks on that. Well, yeah. you know where Cal went? They ended up going, I think, to someplace like the Holiday Bowl, and yeah. they lost. Yeah. They lost. Yeah. Yeah. Was it? Uh, Down in San Diego. Yeah. San Diego. They lost to, like, I think it was Texas Tech beat him. You know? I mean, Texas Tech was a good team, but not as good as Cal that year. Couldn't no. stop the spread. Yeah. No, but they got that. It's, it's so funny. They the spread offense. Yeah. Now, see, I remember the Alamo Bowl. Oh, that, yeah. that one's been, like, 
Is that one still around? Remember the uh, Sun Bowl? The Sun Bowl yeah. was good in El Paso. In El Paso? I actually yeah. went and covered the Sun Bowl one year with the Washington Huskies. I remember covering the Peach Bowl a couple of oh, times. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was working on the East Coast. Yeah. Okay, so they got this. They got these future proposed games. The Bahamas Bowl, the Boca Raton Bowl, the Camilla. The Camilla's Bowl's been around for a while, hasn't it? Uh, oh, no. that's Camilla. I'm thinking of Camilla. Well, maybe that's how you pronounce it, but it's 2014. Yeah. And it's, uh and it's going to be in the Crampton Bowl in Montgomery, Alabama. Is that named for uh, Prince, uh, his girlfriend? You got me, bro. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, Miami Beach Bowl, the Cure Bowl. The Cure, the Cure Bowl? Like, C-U-R-E? Yeah. What are they curing or trying I, to cure? I don't know. <laughs> the unnamed Detroit Bowl, the unnamed du- Dubai Bowl. Dubai. Oh, Dubai. Oh, Get out of here. As in, like, the country of Dubai? Listen, I read this on Wikipedia, and it never lies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Dubai. According to nice. Wiki. Now, you remember, remember the Blue Bonnet Bowl? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, grass, the, the, Astro, the Astro Blue Bonnet Bowl for a while, because they played in the Astrodome. Okay. Yeah, but, I mean, that was for a short time. Uh, you know, Astrodome, that, Astrodome looks like a bump. Next to, is ne- it still there? Ne- next to Reliance Stadium, it looks like a bump. Does it? St- does it still? Yeah, stay? it's still there. Yeah, well, we should keep Candlestick Park up then. There you go. Come on. They even had the Cigar Bowl. No. 1946 to 1954. Where? Uh, Chicago, Tampa, Tampa, or something. Florida. Oh, Tampa. Tampa. Of course, near near Cuba, okay. right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> the Dixie Bowl, the Delta Bowl. Wow. But we're talking just before we went on the Remember air. the Super Bowl champion would play the college all stars? Yes. yes, I do. Early on, that was fun. Yeah. 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 That was yeah, wild. Yeah, I, you know what? I totally, I just got disinterested in the Pro Bowl. I love the baseball All Star Game. Basketball is entertaining. You know, it's 145, 134 type points. But for some reason, the, the Pro Bowl. Well, the guys don't care. They're not going to hit each other hard. But it's yeah, fun to yeah. see all those all those great stars together. That's that part fun. of it's fun. Yeah, yeah, it is fun. Well, before we went on the air, we were talking about how you know, good teams, um, you know, are going to get better in college because you're going to be getting the really good college athletes who say, listen, I want, like right now, Auburn is hot. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, you get the guys saying, well, I'm thinking about going to Cal, but maybe I'll shoot for Auburn. Well, we were talking about this earlier. Here yeah, but, you know, kids you know, want to play. Yeah. So, yeah, Auburn could pursue you at, let's say you're a running back, Very but they, there may be, dude, there may be 10 other running backs better than you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. they don't care. So better be better to be a big fish in a small pond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, if, but if San Diego State wants you and you start right away, I mean, you want these kids want to play. I feel sorry for some of these college coaches, though, because just an example, we were talking off mic here in the Bay Area. We had a, a couple of kids who were from a school in El Cerrito, very good program over in the East Bay, and they were committed to Cal and USC, but because those schools had lousy seasons, they decided to change their uh, intent to, to sign elsewhere. They went to Arizona State. And I understand that happens, but, you know, it just seemed kind of – Right in the middle of the season, it happens. Wow. Well, what's the timeline for being able to make a change? Anytime I'm not you sure. Want? You don't learn. I, don't I think know. you could. I, I I think these kids can <laughs> can change almost any time. Right, right up to the moment, because yeah. it, it all it all comes to it. Both, and and it's kind of a kind of an antiquated thing in this yeah. push button world. It's all it's it's all when fax machines come into play. Can you imagine these grown men in a room? They're just staring at a fax machine. <laughs> waiting for that fax machine. Wait, wait, waiting for that letter screen. of intent signed oh, to right. come through. Because be, once it comes through, that's it. That's going to be tough, though, for a coach who's really counting on this one kid, and the kid is sort of waffling. Well, the kid's going to say, what's a fax machine? And now a lot of this stuff is televised on yeah. ESPNU. The, yeah. the, the, like the, 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 the creme de la creme. I mean, they're sitting there at a table. They're in the gym. Yeah. There's like three hats there, and they like... Yeah. They like pick. They, they go for one ad, no, and then they <laughs> pick the other one, put it on, and then they make their decision. Well, I, I wonder too. Like you get some, you know, good uh, colleges like Harvard, right? It may not be great in football, but you know, you think, gosh, if I can get a free ride scholarship, oh, a good gosh, education. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna cut to our first commercial break, and again, the trivia team is the Dream Team. Dream Team. The Dream Team. You guys remember Which that? Which one? The first one. The first one. Okay. Okay. Who was the player that Michael Jordan said he would refuse to play? Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I get that. This guy would oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. The first three callers before that. Very like, controversial. That's a real slap in the yeah. face. Oh, yeah. The first three callers with the correct answer on a free three-day, two-night stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Call 888-660. And a little child will lead them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 888-660-4495. Right? So I still remember the All-Star game with him and Magic Johnson. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only reason I'm saying that is because I can tell you guys already know the answer. Who was the player that Michael Jordan said he would refuse to play? In the 1992 Olympics, if this guy was chosen for the team, 888-660-4495. Make sure to include your name and your email address. Speak slowly. Spell out your email one letter at a time. Don't touch that dial. Sports Econ 101. We'll be right back. 
No, was it magic? It was Isaiah. It was Isaiah yeah. Thomas, man. Yeah. And, and, and I don't know. And I don't know why. I I don't know yeah, what. what I, don't, I don't know what. The, I don't know what the beef was. Yeah. yeah. Maybe there was some kind of personal thing. No, it was, yeah, it was, it was some personal. Yeah, because it was some kind of thing. Because, because I mean, I said it was, yeah, it was the top point guard. It has to do with a war, probably. Yeah, yeah. probably. I don't know how to say that. The thing about magic was, you know, when he came out and said, I've got AIDS, everybody thought, oh my God, he's going to die. And now, here, here yeah. we are, 20, what is it, 21 years later? Yeah. He's still doing pretty well. Yeah. Of course, he got the best treatment. And he didn't have AIDS. He had the... Virus, which is not full blown AIDS. Ah. He had the SI. But man, right. boy, he but he knocked back that cocktail every day. Man, he worked he worked his ass off. Yeah. yeah. Well, was, he yeah. had a lot. I heard stories. He had like so many different women, and that was the problem. Yeah. He had too many women. And mm -hmm. people were going, "Oh, he's probably gay." Nah, no, no that's too many women. Yeah, he had too many women. <laughs> yeah. Can, can yeah, that's probably what Will Chamberlain. I remember two thousand women. So I well, dated really. a lot in the nineteen eighties. The women were so. Well, you remember? Yeah. Yeah. They were paranoid about having sex. You, know, you better, I was, you better I was have a condom. Then. I mean, you better <laughs> have a condom. You know, after the wild and permissive 70s, it That's was not. Hell, yeah. yeah. It wasn't that way in the 80s. I was too, I was too young and innocent back uh, then. God, what was the beat? What was? Yeah, probably what was some personal thing. You know, these guys. Okay. Here's... Michael's maintained a pretty low profile these days, hasn't he? Yeah. Well, he still owns, does he still own part of the Charlotte team? Yeah, I think so. I think he does. <laughs> you see him in commercials once in a while, but he's pretty. Yeah, he does pretty, a lot. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Vern Glenn Yo. and Bruce McGowan. Yes, indeed. When we cut to the first commercial break, we asked this trivia question. Who was the, again, the theme is the dream team. Who was the player that Michael Jordan said he would refuse to play in the 1992 Olympics if this guy was chosen for the team? Number 11. Number 11. Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah Thomas. And does anybody know why? No, it had to be some kind of personal problem or thing between these guys. I they think both, it had something to do with a woman. Both had big egos. I mean, Michael Jordan was a classy guy. Isaiah Thomas, as we found out, is not a classy guy. There were a lot of things that, was going, that were going on. Well, when he yeah, was coaching, yeah. you know, he did some things that were just, I don't want to get into it, but I'm, I'm not a big fan of Isaiah Thomas. I used to be, though. I mean, I oh, he was a great player. Yeah. No, no, don't, take, don't get me wrong. I liked him as a player. I'm just saying as a person. Now, Michael Jordan... You know, he may have been a, had a big ego, but I, I tell you, how can you not respect him for what he did for the game oh, yeah. and the way he changed the game and just his whole demeanor. I remember talking to him after games, and he would make sure that, you know, everybody got a chance to ask a question. He would look you right in the eye, but he, he also kept you waiting a little bit, as he should. He was royalty. The guy was, like, I mean, six world championships in, what, eight years? And the two years they didn't win, he wasn't with the team. That's amazing. That is, that is amazing. You know what? I'm going to give you guys a quick little uh, trivia question here. Name the only two boxers in history who have fought in five decades. Ooh. Don't you, five don't decades. You, George Ford, no, George Foreman. Why don't you no. think about that while we yeah. talk about this? I was going to say George Foreman played, uh, fought a long time, but I don't think he's five decades. Mm. 60, 70 Not days. Not bad, ago. huh? Yeah. That'd be a good question. Yeah. I'm just tripping. I'm, just, I'm still tripping about Michael and Isaiah. Yeah. I mean, well, there, was, there, was was the some, there, was, there was some rumor, there was, there was some... There was some thought that the, the, the Michael was 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 upset with Isaiah for freezing him out during an All Star game. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, could it be that bad? Gee, uh, you know, you know what? what? Maybe we'll get them both on, and then they'll uh, be able to talk. It, about the it. interesting thing about basketball players, they're more prima donnas, maybe because it's more of an individual game, yeah. and that you, you recognize these guys more. One guy can really impact. I mean, look at what well, Michael. How, how many guys are on a bench? Seven. Yeah. Right. I mean, you know, baseball, you got what, twenty-five. Yeah. Football, you got six. What? 53. Yeah. You know, so yeah, you can stand up a little group. bit more. Small group. Mm. Change the subject here. Major League Baseball lawyers say in a court filing that the Oakland A's request to move to San Jose, Jose has been turned down. Mm. Uh, turned down in well, you know why? That they don't want to deal with the Giants, who will take it to court because the Giants got the territorial rights for San Jose when Bob Lurie years ago tried to get a stadium built down there when the Giants were struggling and. They've kept the territorial rights, and they don't want to give them up, and I don't blame and them. And who gave him the rights? The Haas family. The Haas family, owners of the A's yeah, at the time. Great, great, and probably the best owners in the history of Bay Area sports. With Aqua. And it's so nice that Tony La Russa made the Hall of Fame. Isn't that great? Yeah, I mean, he deserved it. Yeah, and well, okay, let, let's uh, well, let's finish off with the A's thing. And then yeah. we'll go what to a class. class. Him, yeah, Joe Torrey, Torrey, Bobby, uh, Bobby Cox. Cox. Wow, yeah. what a Hall of Fame class. Yeah, that's a great one. Well, going back to the A's for a minute. So where else could they move? They can't move anywhere. They're not going to go to Sacramento. There's no stadium there that's uh, major league ready. 
there is no other uh, major market in the country that can take them. So that's, yeah, they, that's they, a good they, for Oakland. They, yeah. they have no hand. They got no leverage. No, nothing. Yeah. I mean, they they're stuck. So well, and the thing is, Donald Fisher owns the team. Lou Wolf is the front man, but Donald Fisher is the money man. You know, he should stop complaining. Billy Bean has done a great job putting together a winning team. Stick a little more money into the team. And you know, and promote the team. Quit complaining about it. You know, what about the stadium? Don't they have to do something? Yeah, on that? but I mean, again, I understand. That. I think they've done as much to the stadium yeah. as they possibly can. The thing is, they've got a blue wise. collar crowd. The fans there that go to the A's game, generally speaking, are not corporate people. It's not like going to, no. to a Giants game. Yeah, you're when you go into a Giants game, you're going to an event. You're going to you're an, going event. an A's game. You're going to a game. You're going and to now a game. The, for a lot of people who don't know, uh, the uh, Oakland Coliseum is right next to where the Warriors. That's right, at Oracle Arena. For now. For now. For now. I, they want to move to San right. Francisco. They, yeah, they, they want to move to San Francisco. Those high rollers, yeah, they want to move them to the base of the Bay Bridge. Well, they used right to. In the, the, right in San Francisco. They played, for those that don't know, in the, oh, Cal, right. in the Cow yeah. Palace, which was, an, which was a big agricultural hall back in the early 60s in Daly City. But they're they're talking about building this brand new arena right. on the waterfront. Oh, yeah, one of the piers. Yeah, yeah. To, yeah. to resemble the... The uh, the one in uh, Australia, the Opera right? Plaza in in Australia. Oh, yeah. yeah, so that'd be cool. You could uh, for us Bay Area people, we could uh, just take a ferry right over yeah. to it. I think it's a great idea. I know I know it's a money thing, but I mean I know the Warrior fans. A lot of them don't like it, but uh, generally speaking, the Warriors are the Bay Area's team. They're not Oakland's team. They're not San Francisco team. They're, that's why they're called the Golden State they're, Warriors. They're mm-hmm. California team because the Golden State. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, Northern California. I mean the fans in LA are not going to no, acknowledge them. <laughs> the Clippers fans and the Lakers. <laughs> the Lakers fans. Oh, that's right. Clippers, they are in California. That's right. right. Okay. Uh, yeah, in fact, we were just talking about them. Liam Russo, Bobby Cox, Joe Torrey getting into the Hall of Fame. Congratulations, guys. Um, but George Steinbrenner only got half of the votes that were needed. He's never going to get in. And uh, you got to figure there's got to be a hack. Well, there, there's so many. I mean, each each year, there's there's so many players, so many managers that that, that have to get in. They're going to they're going to take the spot that an owner would. Oh, sure. You know, so that's. And I, how many owners I hate to say it. I, I mean, that may be that may be why ultimately Eddie Devardo didn't get in. Yeah. I mean, how, how many owners are in the Hall of Fame though? Yeah. You can only vote. You only have to vote for like a player or a. No, it's, it's no. not so much that. It's just that so many greats that are eligible. That 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 would supersede any owner. Or no, no. What I'm saying that, but don't you put them in in separate categories? Separate categories. Well, the thing. Well, is well, there's a ve- there's yeah. a veterans yeah. committee. You're right about yeah. that. Yeah. But I, but I, yeah, I'm talking about to get in legitimately. On 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 a on a first time second time ballot where 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 everybody gets a vote more separate from a veterans committee okay. that, uh, that 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 will vote you down the line. And baseball sets a much higher standard. And I'll be honest with you though, I think they should allow all the steroid guys in. I really do. I, I think if you if you keep all of them out, you have to keep everybody who ever played in that era. You think that'll eventually happen? Maybe with the next commissioner yeah, that comes in. Fifty years from now, it'll happen. <laughs> you think you think it'll take that long? I mean, yeah, I do. I think it'll be not 30, 30 years. It's going to take. People who never saw these guys play, who are looking at the record books, you know, and say 2040, because too many of us, too many sports writers I know, are just so jaded about it. Now, a guy like Bruce Jenkins writes from the Chronicle. He says Bond should go in. He says that Clemens should go in. I agree. Bond and Clemens were Hall of Famers before they started doing steroids. You know, it's interesting with with Clemens. Um, you know, I'm trying to think of the steroids. How much? But if you they follow the letter of the law, if they cheated. Well, then, you know, I mean, yeah. but how many other guys? I mean, I mean, we don't know. You know, uh, Ken Caminiti, yeah, the, 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 the late great Ken Rose bet on the Rose bet on the game. Yeah. We saw, we saw how, how great of a player he was. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think Rose should be in. I, I really do. I think Rose is being kept out because he, he lied and he won't fess up to it. Or if he is, all he had to do was just say, yeah, I did I'm it. Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, like, yeah. Again, Andy Pettit. Everyone for, is now going to forget that he did steroids too. I think Barry Bonds would have a much better chance and Roger Clemens if they were better liked by the media as well. The media has a tendency, if you're not popular, I mean, just look at Colin Kaepernick as an example. Everybody around the Bay Area who is in the media doesn't like Colin Kaepernick because he doesn't what? give them any, any interesting answers. He's, he's curt and he's uh, he's short. Not. And so what? He yeah, then he came, and then he came out He came out a week and a half ago and, and pretty much said, hey, I, I'm contractually obligated to play football. Yeah. I mean, this this is, you know, you guys. He's got a big smile on his face. He seems like a nice uh, guy. He, is, he actually is. I think he's just not very sophisticated when it comes to the media. And he feels, because he set such a high standard last year, everybody wanted him to continue to do that. And teams adjusted to him. And he, he's having a tough time. Well, you know what we do, Bruce? We build guys up oh, and yeah. just knock them down. <laughs> That's what we do. That's what we That's do. That's thing. Yeah. Well, Kaepernick, we were talking about this earlier, that, you know, last year he did a lot of great running. Mm-hmm. And... 
They stopped the read option. They, they cut it off. He can't run it on the corners anymore. He did actually last week against Seattle, or a couple weeks ago against Seattle, he set up a, a touchdown or a, a big play. I think it was a go-ahead field goal with a, a read option run and caught uh, Seattle flat-footed. But other teams now have figured out how to defense him. Well, you know, when you didn't, you know, you, you started your first game in week 11 last year. Nobody got any tape on him. Yeah. So you had a way to prepare for him. That's so, right. yeah, I mean, you can't, you can't defend what you don't know. That's right. Now... I mean, after all these games, you know, everybody's seen it, especially on this all-22 coaches film. And so they know how to seal off the edges and keep them in there and keep them from running. Yeah. And but he, then, then you got to figure, if that's going to happen, then you're going to have some kind of other advantage, right? Somewhere well, he's going to gonna have to make adjustments. And Jim Harbaugh, and that's up to Jim gonna Harbaugh. Have to learn, he's going to have to learn how to play quarterback. Exactly. And Jim Harbaugh, it's on him, too. And Jim Harbaugh is trying to stand behind this guy because he's got no trick. Who's he going to have as, as uh, an alternative? Who's the backup? Colt McCoy, I think, isn't it? Colt McCoy. Yeah. Who was, you know, he's Kerry Brown. May have been a good uh, college oh, quarterback, yeah. but uh, I don't know. Well, he played for the Browns for a little bit. He, he did. did. He did. Yeah, he did. Yeah. He did. Yeah. 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 Do well. Did not work out. No. As you know, Joe Montana, when he first showed up, nobody had heard of him outside of a few hardcore football fans in college, and he became the best thing. But it took him two years of sitting on the bench watching Steve DeBerg, and then slowly yeah. they moved him in. At the age of 24, suddenly, at 25, he becomes a star. And then a place uh, somewhere in Montana, they decided to change the name of their city to Joe. Joe Montana. Montana. That's, Montana. Right. That's, that's right. right. I, think only that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, a couple of years ago, yeah. Yeah, it was like, uh, I think it was a town of about 50, so it's yeah. pretty easy to uh, run. Well, it's nice, you know, that three letters, J-O-E. That's yeah. it. Where do you live? Joe Montana. Pretty, pretty simple. <laughs> that works. I like that. That, that works. Okay, so our trivia theme is the dream team. All right. Okay. And we're going to cut to the second commercial break here. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about Clayton Kershaw and his lifetime lifetime three hundred million dollar contract that was turned down. Okay, who was the coach of the Dream Team? The very first coach. Yes. Very first. Okay. Okay. The first three callers with the correct answer on a free three day two night stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Call eight 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 six six zero forty four ninety five to answer this question. Who was the coach of the Dream Team? Call 888-660-4495 and make sure to include your name and your email address, but speak slowly and spell out your email one letter at a time. And if I remember correctly, weren't there a lot of teams that around the, the uh, world who just, they would just be in so awe of these guys, treating them like royalty, getting oh, sure. picture taken? Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you play against them and then you sure. get your picture taken? I just love that. I mean, they, they beat the brains out of another team and then you got the opposing team. Hey, can I get a picture? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I personally love the fact that they had the dream team because it was unfair having these college kids go against guys oh, yeah. who were getting paid from you know from other countries. Okay, so again, one more time, who was the coach of the dream team? Eight 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 six six zero forty four ninety five. Don't touch that dial. When Sports Econ one hundred and one comes back, we're going to talk a little bit about Clayton Kershaw turning down a lifetime three hundred million dollar contract. Stay tuned. Is that the late Chuck Daly? Very good. Two yeah, but they, yeah, yeah but they, but they got. Uh, weren't his assistant coaches? Did was it like weren't and like? Well, that's see, that's what I I thought people were gonna. Yeah. Oh, they were gonna get Shashevsky. Well, they just won. They won what two two championships? I think mm -hmm. they won in '90, and I think they won in '91. Which but also like, which also added to, added yeah. to the allure of the controversy yeah. when. Isaiah got his got his dream team. Oh so. yeah, there you go. Maybe that was quite. Yeah, you're favoring Isaiah. When Isaiah was, was snubbed because yeah. Chuck Taylor was coach of the Pistons. Oh, that's right. And Isaiah was his point guard. Dennis Rodman was not on that team. <laughs> Wait, Dennis Rodman's got this weird relationship with Kim Jong over in North Korea. <laughs> that is so strange. <laughs> he's, he's getting rebounds for him. God. He really thinks that you just, hey, man, do me a solid, man. Just, <laughs> hey, at least, uh, <laughs> hey, at least those yeah. journalists, man. Come on, I ain't doing anything. <laughs> I heard a really disturbing report that Morg that uh, J.P. Morgan is paying uh, people in China, the elites in China, their kids, something to get in some kind of favorable situation over there, which is illegal, and they're going to get called on the carpet for it. But J.P. Morgan Bank. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Get a business. Yeah. Well, they're they're trying to you know, to promote their business or get better a better situation in China. Yeah. They're going to give the elite people in power, you know, in China, their kids, a preferential treatment job. Uh, whatever. Right. I'm not sure exactly how that works. <laughs> That ought to be illegal. It apparently is. I mean, they're going to get they'll probably pay a fine, but slap on the wrist yeah. again. You say you pay a hundred million dollar fine. Yeah. Maybe no, five billion. Yeah. Exactly. It's like 
<laughs> Chump change. Yeah, a friend of mine uh, works, he's very high up at uh, Barclays Global, which is now BlackRock. And he gets I have stock in that. You do? BlackRock? I do. I have a, I have a, uh, uh, because I, uh, yeah, I just, I just remember, yeah, I have, I have stock in that. Do you know how much money they can manage? No. Over a trillion dollars. Wow. I don't have a trillion in. How many quadrillion dollars in yeah, yeah. the world? The equivalent of that. I want to see. Yeah, I want to. Yeah, I want. I want to see. What 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 a, what a trillion in, in ones fill up this whole room and then some? Oh my gosh! Yeah. Oh, would it fill wow. up the building? Fill up the building, maybe. Yeah, a trillion. Yeah. yeah. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Scary. Straight cash, homie. Biggest. One. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, you messed me up. Let me start again. <laughs> One, two. Except the money today is just it's cartoon money in, in pros. Yeah. It is. It's monopoly it is. money. Yeah, it millionaires. Is. No, no, no. Like I said, everyone would be the world's first trillionaire. And then, yeah, I mean, they're, they're quadrillion dollars. Yeah. I, I got to laugh. Uh, my, I, I just introduced my kids to uh, to the original Batman TV series. Oh, geez. Well, and they're just oh, laughing. Oh, Adam so West. And they're laughing. Is Adam West still alive? I don't know. I don't know, but yeah, but, but, <laughs> but the the, uh, the the first ever one, the uh, the villain was uh, Joker. The, the villain was the Joker. The Joker. Since he's a and uh, the second one, the villain was the Penguin. And in the second one, Burgess Meredith. Yeah, they they yeah they kidnapped this uh, this actress who was in Gotham, uh, recording a show. And uh, they and the uh, the ransom it was it was. Like two hundred thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah, that's a lot of money those days. <laughs> Fifty bucks. Yeah, it's so funny. But I, I love when Robin kept coming up with this thing. But it's so funny when someone had done it, you know, like this, and he goes, "It's a holy dark canyon." <laughs> Son, yeah. pow! That no, was very, a funny show. It yeah, was, it was a good movie. But they're they're, they're all they're, these entire episodes. They're all on YouTube. You just like oh, pull really? it up, just watch it. Yeah, I love I love the Catwoman, Julie Newmar. She had these. Yeah. These eyes, you know. There were like three of them. Yeah, uh, uh, Julie Lamar, yeah. Halle Berry, uh, no, no, and, and uh, Baxter. And Baxter. And also, <coughs> and I think... Uh, Meredith, 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 Baxter, right? Meredith Baxter, right? Meredith Baxter. Meredith well, Baxter and, uh, and uh, Eartha Kitt. Eartha Kitt, yeah. Eartha Kitt. Right. <laughs> Eartha Kitt. Sure. Did I ever tell you about the time I met Eartha Kitt? No. Ah, oh, great story. Um, um, I can tell, tell on the air. Oh, yeah. I'd like to hear this. All right, let's get to our question. We'll go right into that. Eartha Kitt. Welcome back to Sort Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Vern Glenn Hello. and Bruce McGowan. Hello there. Okay, we got the, the second commercial break. We asked this trivia question. Who was the coach of the Dream Team? That was the late, great Chuck Daly. That was Chuck right. Daly. See, I thought people were going to answer uh, Mike Krzyzewski. No, he was later. Hey, I pronounced that pretty well. That was bad. pretty good. Krzyzewski. Now spell it. Uh, <laughs> K-R-Z-Y. Oh, uh, you're lucky. Wait, I get No, but you know what? I'm still wrong on this one. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. It, there's a K and a Z and a Y. In yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, off what air. What are those Polish names? They're tough to pronounce. They're yeah, tough, they're tough, tough to, to spell. So tough to spell. I don't even know if he can spell it correctly. Yeah. Um, when we were uh, off air, uh, you were telling us that your kids are enjoying yeah, the just, Batman stuff. Yeah, well, yeah but, but, but believe it or not, America out there, uh, there, there was a time when the Batman original series wasn't animated, you know, no special no, effects. That, no, yeah, except for the soft power. Yeah, 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 yeah. 1966. Adam, Adam West. Adam West yeah. was Batman. And Burt Ward. Ward. Burt Ward. Yeah. So uh, anyway, I, I just introduced my young kids to it, and because uh, they're all these episodes, they're on YouTube now. That's great. And uh, and so enough. so the very first season one, episode one, Frank Gorshin as the Riddler. 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 Okay, and then the second one, Burgess Meredith as the Penguin. The Penguin. Yeah. And Sid um, Caesar as the Joker. That's right. That's okay. right. And the Newmar as the Catwoman. All Catwoman. There was another Catwoman. There were actually two, weren't yeah, there? There was yeah. Julie Newmar. Uh, Eartha Kitt. Eartha Kitt. And uh, uh, Lee, Lee, Lee Merriweather. Lee Merriweather. Lee Merriweather. That's Lee right. Merriweather. Oh, yeah, former so, Miss America. Exactly. No, no, right now, she was that girl, wasn't she? No. no that uh, that was uh, uh, Barbara Gordon. That was... Uh, uh, oh, that's Commissioner no, Gordon. You're thinking it was. Uh, it was. It, it was. Uh, it wasn't Lee. Mer Lee Merriweather was. She. She was I a cat woman. Oh, she was. She was, was a US, um, Miss America. But you got to know Earth. Or you got to. Yeah, I, 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 I had a brush with fame. Eartha Kitt. Eartha Kitt. She. She. She came into uh, KRON TV in uh -huh. San Francisco to be on a talk show, and I, I found out downstairs. I was like, wow, because I was, I was a huge Batman yeah. fan when I was growing up. So, so I'm going to go up and say hi to her. She was more than just Batman. 
Batman guest, though she was. Oh, incredible. just 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 incredible talent. Yeah. I mean, it was Vegas, Broadway. I mean, just yeah. it's her. It's her the kid. And she had that great voice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so so I go up there and she's sitting right there, mm. and I get within maybe five feet of her, and and I just go up. Uh, uh, um, Eartha, I just want to introduce myself. I'm just a huge, huge, big fan. As as I was getting the the a fan out, yeah. she just kind of holds her hand up and just yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh come on! Oh. Just, just gave me the just oh. just big time me. Oh, that's I, a shame. Yeah, that just is. just completely just oh, blew me man. off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah similar, that's the only thing she ever said to me. I have a similar situation happen when uh, Steve Allen. You remember Steve Allen? Sure. Yeah. The, the original Tonight Show. I went. No, I wasn't Steve Allen. No, that was yeah, uh, Jack, Jack Parr. Jack Parr. But, but Steve Allen was it was on with Frank and Mike at, yeah. on KNBR once, and I I had to sit with him for a while and kind of keep him uh, busy, you know, talking to him while they were getting ready to do an interview with him, and he just. He was totally disinterested in even making small talk. Maybe he was having a, maybe he was having a rough day. I don't know. But I just thought, oh, geez, he was rude and he was not happy. And Some of these people, when the when the red light on the camera is not on, yeah. they got nothing to say. Yeah. Wow. Well, I mean, we can do know. a whole show on famous <laughs> yeah. blow-offs. I yeah. mean, it was, yeah. But you know what though? You know Willie Mays, and he doesn't treat you that way. That's right. No, that's he, he and does. Willie Mays, and Eartha. No offense, but Eartha Kent is no Willie Mays. Yeah. That's right. Willie Mays. I, I'm proud to say. Uh, he's got a pet name for me, Willie Mays. Yeah. So, so when he's joking around, he calls me Pee Wee because I'm height challenged. <laughs> Sorry, America. Anyway, but uh, but but when he's serious, he calls me Vernon. Not Vern. Nice. Vernon. Does he, he know your first name? James, no, doesn't know. No. Willie always asks me. He says, "How come you're not working in the room?" I said, "Well, I'm working. I'm just working part time." Well, where are you? <laughs> so you got to turn on this little radio station at a certain time. I don't know where that is. Yeah. <laughs> now he's what eighty. He's 81, 82. 82. Yeah, his wife passed wife a passed, couple yeah. of years ago. Well, a year ago, she. Yeah, Willie's, Willie's amazing. So love that guy. He's I, amazing. You know what? He's, he's the standard, and I keep saying, okay, is this guy as good as Willie? Is this guy as good as Willie? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, best storyteller. If you want to get a guy to talk about baseball, this is the best storyteller in the world. I read, I, well, I read some uh, article, and it was just incredible about the sort of things you know he'd noticed, like yeah, you know this catcher. Subtleties. Yeah, a little subtle. Yeah. You know, this catcher mm -hmm. had a little bit of a twitch. And so uh, when he comes sliding yeah. into home, he made sure he, he slides the out. I mean, it's well, just Willie used to Willie used to actually yeah. sit in the dugout during batting practice while his other teammates had finished taking their batting practice and go back into the clubhouse and get ready for the game. Willie would sit there and watch the other team taking batting practice because he would pick up little things that hitters were doing so he knew how to play them in the outfield. It's just I mean, amazing. that's amazing. Yeah. 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 Well, I remember hearing Ty Cobb, what he would do is he would do the other uh, batters you know, during batting practice and were hassling them for whatever reason, probably Roger Boyd. Very nice guy. Well, and, uh, well neither was Ty Cobb. No. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And apparently, Ty, Ty, he, what he did like 19 in a row. He, he was hitting foul ball right into their dugout. Really? <laughs> wow. Now, Ty Cobb's another guy. Again, we're we're here doing this show here in Northern California. He lived in Northern California for a long time at the end of his life in Atherton. Oh, that's great. And he got he got into a big uh, dispute with PG&E over a bill. This guy was one of the wealthiest ex ball players, by the way. But he got into a dispute over something like a fifty dollar bill, and they turned off his electricity. So he rigged up a line to the next person's house next door. So he was the original guy yeah, stealing he, electricity. It, well, he rigged up a, a, an extension cord so he could have electricity. <laughs> I mean, this is the kind. Of, and wow. it, toward the end of his life, he would carry around a bag full of securities along with his pistol, which you know he had just in case he had trouble with people. But he would carry like $150,000, $200,000 of securities, which was a lot of money back in 1960. Bonds, right? Yeah. yeah. And he'd, he'd uh, be on the phone with his broker, you know, constantly making deals. He was an amazing oh. character. Wow. Not a likable guy, though. And Vern, he did not like your people. No, he did not. No, he, not very, he was very. You yeah. talking about broadcasters? No, I'm talking about African Americans. <laughs> yeah, if, if you were slightly darker than him, it's yeah. but you, you, oh. it was because you better have a tan. Yeah, because yeah. uh, yeah. it was the Georgia nice, beach. Yeah. Oh yeah, not a nice yeah. man. Not a nice man. Yeah. Yeah. Call me. Who, who was the uh, first guy who played uh, in the 1880s? I keep forgetting his name. Fleetwood. Yes. Yeah, uh, oh gosh, you know he he played and then he was he was banished very quickly Cap because Anson. Camp Anson. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a shame. Yeah, I mean, sixty. You think about it. All of the great players like Cool Papa Bell, yeah. and you know, Satchel Josh Gibson. Kane, Josh Gibson. It could have made the game that much better. Oh yeah, for sure. It's a, it's a shame. Okay, uh, speaking of baseball, Clayton Kershaw turned down a quote lifetime three hundred million dollar contract from the Dodgers. And I understand a lifetime means it's basically that's it. That's it. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're gonna yeah. you're just playing. Here's three hundred million. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. 
I don't, what I guess I don't understand is, I mean, the Dodgers have a pretty good team, so it's not like he's, you know, going to play a lifetime for a team that's in the cellar. Yeah, but he just, I, I think he, he likes like like most water. athletes. He just wants to have that option of, you know, being able to move on. I well, mean, I heard he wanted to, to hold off for enough money to afford a two-bedroom fixer-upper in Torrance. Is <laughs> no. that true? Uh, you know, it's, it's sad. There are very few athletes today that want to stay in one place anymore. And I can't really blame them, but how many, you know, Cal Ripken Jr. and Tony Gwynn and Joe DiMaggio. And George Brett. Yeah, George Brett. How many guys are like that anymore? You know? Yeah, but why would they want to, don't you get camaraderie with uh, your teammates and, you know, you yeah, get another you know, band? But look at the, look yeah, at, but there's a lot of turnover. A lot of turnover. I mean, a lot, lot, yeah. lot, lot of guys leave the team, move yeah. on. You know, it's, it's all about, you know, the, and, they, and they recognize that uh, that the career is a shelf life. Yeah, look at and, and what's the agent's job? Exactly. To get every yeah. red penny he possibly That's can for the before agent. it's over. Well, look at the San Francisco yeah. Giants. They won a World Series in 2010. 2012, they come back. They only have eight guys who were on that team. They were important eight guys, yeah. mostly pitchers. Eight guys out of the 25, two years later. And they win another World Championship with a completely different team. Yeah. How about that? That says it all, right? That's America. Very few guys left now, like... Like, I, I just, I don't know why I'm thinking of him, just popped in my head. Rod Beck, when he re-signed with the Giants, for where, where he could have gotten so much more from another team, he just said, hey, man, how much money do you need? Yeah. You know, if you, if you, you never, like the guys, um, yeah. you know, like, uh, come on, who's, uh, who, I'm losing my train of thought here, Hunter, Hunter Pence. <laughs> yeah. You know, apparently he's such a likable guy, you know, guys would want to hang around him. Oh, yeah. You know? But, you know, again, it's, as Vernon points out, it's a short shelf life. You're one injury away from having your career derailed, especially in football, but in baseball and basketball, too. I mean, these guys, they're done, most of them, by the time they're 30. And they have a short period of time to make a lot of money, and then they have to be out on their own in the real world, like you and me and, and Vernon here. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys, they, they want to chase that ring. Uh, that's part of it, too. But, and and he's know, got it. Yeah. That's right. I bet. And, you, and then you want another one, of course. Al Davis, I remember, I'll never forget this. Went up to Ken Stabler after they won the Super Bowl. They finally won the Super Bowl, 1976. And the first thing he says to Stabler, can you get me another one? I mean, come on. on. Can you get me another one? Can you get me another one? <laughs> Is that how he talks? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He talks like this. <laughs> hey, Snake, can you get me another one? Yeah. <laughs> Edward, <laughs> your, your, your little program. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Those two were not the, the best of friends, by the way. Uh, later on in his career, Stabler had a bad season in 78. And Al Davis made some comments about him publicly. Usually they wouldn't do this sort of thing. And somebody asked Sabler about it. And Sabler said, I'd like to. They said, are you burying the hatchet with Al Davis, you know? He said, I'd like to bury the hatchet right between his shoulder blades. <laughs> and then wow. he, he lasted one more year and was traded to the Houston. Houston Oilers. Yeah. And if you ask him, well, he's, Al Davis is gone now. But I remember asking him. He was talking about Jim Plunkett should be in the Hall of Fame. How about Ken Stabler? We're not talking about Ken Stabler. We're talking about Jim Plunkett. Is Don't mention Ken Stabler's name. Is Stabler still not in the Hall of Fame? No, he's no. not in the Hall now, who's keeping him out? Well, his you know, same, same guys are keeping out Ray Guy. I think I, I, yeah. I think I think Stabler's the victim of just being away too long. Yeah. yeah I mean, there's guys like us who remember him, but yeah. he played till he was 38 years old. He was pretty good. I mean, he got a team in the Super good. Bowl. He got the Raiders during their glory years. If, if I'm not mistaken, you know, even though Pittsburgh is considered the team of the decade for the 70s. The Raiders actually won more games. Yeah, they were be yeah, well, they were beating the Raiders to get to the big yeah, game. Yeah. yeah. Well, listen, yeah. I remember the Steelers, they, they started off the decade not really that well in 70 and 71. They became a great team in 72, 73, 74. Yeah. And, then they, and then the Raiders got the championship in 77. The Broncos in 70, I'm sorry, 76. Broncos got it in 77 in the conference. And then the Steelers got it back Boy, in the last two uh, years. Boy, Oakland was a great place to be in 72, 73, 74, oh. especially with the A's. Oh, my gosh. Back to city, back to back. Of, they called it the city of champions. You think about it. Five championships in a row. A's from 72 to 74, Warriors in 75, and the Raiders in 76. That's pretty good. Yeah. Five in a row in three okay. different sports. Okay, I want to change something real quickly. A few weeks ago, T.J. Ward, who put Gronkowski out for the year with a torn ACL because he hit him so low, he said that he was afraid of getting fined if he hit oh, him yeah. too high. Mm -hmm. I mean, you think about that. That is pretty uh, telling about where the game's going. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot... Well, unfortunately, you know, yeah, low, yeah. I don't know how Vernon feels about this, but unfortunately, the NFL has tried to legislate defense out of the game in the sense that they don't want these hard hits. But how the whole basis of football is blocking and tackling. How do you stop guys that are, you know, tremendous athletes and have all this adrenaline going yeah. and the, the testosterone from, you know, not hitting each well, other hard? What you do is you ask the guy as you're tackling him, did you kind of stand up a little bit more? I don't want to hit right. you in the head. Right, right. That works uh, really well, doesn't it? Well, like, I mean, the hit that, uh, that Ahmad Brooks put on uh, – 
And Drew Brees yeah, yeah. a few weeks ago. Oh, that, that was ridiculous. ridiculous. That was ridiculous. And it, and it cost the, the 49ers the game, you know? I mean, In the neck region. Yeah. So he gets whistled yeah. and fined. That was terrible. I mean, I remember years ago, they didn't used to call horse collars. That was just no. another way to tackle somebody. Hey, if, if they did, the, Raiders, the 49ers might have not have gone on a great run because Eric Wright horse tackled, the horse collared, uh, Drew Pearson right after the catch that Dwight Clark made. And Drew Pearson would have would have had 15 yards and they would have been in field goal range and probably won the game. Yeah, this whole concussion thing, it's going, it's going to change the game. I mean, you're going to see a number yeah. of knee-related Injuries because guys are hitting low. And, and no, no, and nobody, nobody wants to. Right? I mean, you're not allowed to. There's certain things you're not allowed to do. Well, hitting the back, yeah. yeah, yeah. Crack back blocks that sort of thing. Okay, we're going to cut to our third and final commercial break. Again, we're talking about the dream team. Who did the dream team lose to in their first practice squad? The first three callers with the correct answer were pre I knew I had. They had, to had a scrimmage game. They had an exhibition uh, game. Apparently, they did. Yeah, the first three callers oh. are going to win a per, uh, with the correct answer. Are going to win a free three day, three day, two nights stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Call 888-660-4495 to answer this question: Who did the Dream Team lose to? Because remember, I think they went undefeated, didn't they? But they lost in their first practice squad. Make sure to include your name and your email address. They slowly spell out your email. And it wasn't a team practice squad, right? Uh, well, it just says what, it wasn't. It wasn't. To. Who did they lose to? First but it was another country. Yeah. Was it another country? I'm not going to tell you anything. <laughs> I'm going to tell you nothing and you'll like it. Well, like, I mean, it could have been the starting like five it. against the second five. <laughs> <laughs> it no, been, no, yeah. It's not a trick question. Okay. okay. Don't touch that dial. Sports Econ 101. We'll be right back. Spain? Was it Spain? You may guess Spain. If okay, you I'll know. guess Spain. I think it was Spain. <laughs> not it, was, it was like some, some it was not, not a bad team, but not a great team. Spain had a pretty good team, actually. I think they won a, one year they won a bronze or something. Do you went to the Olympics? Were it at all? You gonna watch much the Sochi Olympics? The uh, oh, the Winter Olympics. Olympics? That'll be yeah, kind of fun. yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll watch the opening ceremony. Yeah. I like uh, to watch this, the the downhill racing. That's my favorite. Yeah. I love watching that stuff. You guys What's ever been? How the hell is Lindsey Vaughn gonna ski? <laughs> she's with hey, an ace. I guess she, I hear she's out there. Yeah, she's out there. She she finished fourth or something. She finished the second off the lead the other day. How long ago did she tore? She's twenty eight years old. Tore her left a handful of months ago. Yeah. Wow. Good day. Yeah. And She's an amazing athlete, though. Uh, I can see why she and Tiger are together. God, can you imagine those two? What kind of athletes they would produce? Yeah. Holy <laughs> shit. Well, sure that's, that's why it's like with my I'm sure it's, I'm, I'm I'm sure it's come up in pillow talk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, Ed, there, isn't she his squeeze right now? I think she yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. But Tiger might not want her more. He might not want any kids. He's got two. He's got two already. Yeah, well, Lindsay may not Does want to be there. Does she have any kids? Oh. I don't know. She's you know, never been married. Women kind of, you know, they get that. Uh, yeah, that's true. When they get their thirties, start checking. My wife put the full court press on me when she was thirty-three. Mm. That's a good time to do it. Yeah. Tiger might go to full <laughs> out. She might just keep, just grab his cheeks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what are you doing? Shut up. Asking me these questions, I said, "Man, dating must be tough." 
And then she goes, tell me about it. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know? I, 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 she was, I thought she was married and had a kid. Maybe she was. Now she's, she's got a kid. The, well, maybe she's out on the market now. Maybe she's maybe she's not married anymore. That's I, tough. I, I used to tease her all the time. You're the next Mrs. Yeah. Glenn. Yeah. <laughs> very attractive woman and very, very uh, talented. Seems yeah. like a nice lady. Marco, I remember one Marco one time. He had, he had just been divorced, and we went to go see some banker, and this woman was just... I don't want to say drop dead gorgeous. She was really pretty. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to fix him up with, with her, you know. And, uh, and, uh, and he, they didn't get a chance to really kind of make up. But as he and I leave, he goes, that's the next woman I'm going to be divorcing. <laughs> <laughs> they never uh, <clears throat> Okay. Hey, here we go. Just a couple of minutes to go, my friend. Okay. Did we bang this thing yeah. out? Oh, it's an hour, yeah, hour and a half. Where are you guys with our sports? Hold on. Oh, sorry. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Vern Glenn yeah. and Bruce McGowan. Hello there. When we cut to the third and final commercial break trivia question, we ask this question. Who did the Dream Team lose to in their first practice squad? I'm just Bruce? Making, I'm just making a guess. I'm going to say Spain. No. Lithuania. No. The NCAA Basketball All-Stars. And they were chosen ah, for their expected wow. skill levels of their European opponents. Wow. Those kids. Yeah, there you that go. Pretty cool. Yeah. Um, okay. Beat the Dreamers. Yeah. Okay, guys, do you remember I asked you uh, who were the only two boxers to have fought in five decades? I, you know, uh, George Foreman fought for a long time, but I don't, no. think, he, I don't think he fought in five decades. Nope. Five decades. Ali? Nope. Going way, way back. It's going way back, right? Uh, one five of them is Jersey Joe Walcott. Walcott. Nope. Okay. Jack, uh, Jack Johnson. Jack, Jack Johnson. Johnson. Yeah. He was one of them. And Roberto Duran. Roberto Duran. The Hands of Stone. Yeah. I think a Jack wow. Johnson probably fought in the bare knuckle yeah. initially. Uh -huh. And then then later on. Did yeah. he ever lace him? Did he ever put the gloves on? Jack Johnson. Yeah, he, he was all bare knuckles. Did you ever see that movie? What was it? Uh, the Great White Hope with yes. James Earl Jones? James, yes, I did. Good film. Very, very good. James well, Earl Jones was, was he's perfect. perfect. He was yeah. perfect. He was perfect. Mm. Good. All right, guys. We're going to cut to our thoughts for the day here. I have a Jack Johnson story. Tell, tell, her, tell, tell her real fast. Uh, How fast? Years ago, he was he, he was he was speeding, and then the, the cops stopped him and said, "Hey, that'll be fifty dollars." Because because Jack Johnson he was pompous. Okay, so they, they they were just doing anything to get him. So he goes, "All right, here's fifty, and here's another fifty because I'll be driving the same way back." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love that. Okay, thoughts for the day. Lou Holt said, "On this team, we're all united in one common goal." My job. <laughs> True. And former Auburn football coach Shug Jordan said, "Shug Jordan, Shug Jordan. Mm -hmm. oh, always remember Goliath had a forty-point favorite over David." <laughs> I thought that was kind of cute. Uh, Tune good. in next week to Sports Econ One Hundred and One. We're going to be discussing sports topics from a business perspective and giving away more vacations for answering trivia questions. Sports trivia questions. Thanks for listening. On behalf of our team, I'm your host Edward Brown. We'll see you next week. Happy holidays, America. So long.